I love hearing what you say. I love knowing all your desires. I'm so pleasure to obey. Your favor's like a sunrise driving all my nights away. I love sitting at your feet, Holy Spirit. I love sitting at your feet, Holy Spirit, every single day. I love sitting at your feet every single day. There is no There's nobody, there's nobody like you. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Holy Spirit, there is nobody, there's nobody like you. Mike Murdoch here a follower of Jesus, a passionate protege of the Holy Spirit, a pursuer of truth, a great need in my life for wisdom. And I've got some powerful thoughts for you today. Father, thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your peace, your wisdom, your impartations. Thank you for the protection chapter of Psalms 91, the healing chapter of Jeremiah 17, the covenant chapter of Isaiah 58. Thank you for the integrity guarantee Numbers 23, 19. Thank you for the comfort of Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things are working together for the good of those that love you and are called according to your purpose. Let the next 40 minutes together bring peace, Hope, clarity of our assignment, your will shall be done in our life. Amen. Mike Murdoch here, and I'm so glad you're with me today live here. Seven keys for creating changes in your life. Nobody has your same goals. Nobody has your same dreams and plans. Nobody has your nature. Nobody can endure what you've endured. You have your own desires, your own goals. You won't always know the changes you need. Sometimes you're simply aware that I don't like the way my life is going. One of the most famous preachers in the world, great church, you would know his name if I called it. He's on television all over the world. I walked in one day. He's one of the greatest friends God ever gave me. And I arrived to preach for him. And he sat there in his office. He had trophies of all the famous animals in the world all over the walls, a bear, a lion, elephant. He had been all over the world, a genius really. And he says, Brother Mike, I don't like the way my life is going. 
He said, in the last month, I've only been with my wife and children three nights. He said, I don't like what's happening in my life. What goes wrong in our life? The seizure of opportunities. We see an opportunity to help somebody and we seize it. We see an opportunity of an open door and we seize it. And we get obsessed with the potentials of what all we could accomplish and do, what we could own. I bought seven houses in seven days near the Wisdom Center. Why? They were a block from the Wisdom Center. My daddy needed a home. My sister and her husband needed a home. The staff needed home. And they suddenly became available and I seized them. I was driving down a road and I saw a home with arches right there. Oh, I've got, I've got, oh, I love that. I love that. I love its arches. I pulled over the car, jumped out, knocked on the window or no door because it said for sale. And I said, how much you want for it? And she said, uh, well, I would take. And she told me, I said, I'll give you 100000 cash today for it. You would? I said, I would. And I did. Not anticipating that I would spend $90,000 on the repairs of it. In weeks and weeks. Basic keys. Desires have expirations, but repairs don't. Your desires will change a lot throughout your life. What you want on Monday, Friday, you see something you prefer. Oh, I jumped too quick for that. Why did I do that? But the repairs never stop until the day you lay down in a casket. And that's the day the roof doesn't need repair because it doesn't matter anymore. What are the changes needed? Are your problems being created by the tyranny of desires? Desires can become a tyrant. I know. As we drove down the road from the, the clinic a few days, a few hours ago, minutes ago, so I had to take some, what do they call them, scans and x-rays of my body. I saw at least 15 or 20 things I would change along the road. They built some towers here the last few months in Colleyville. And they could have made them so much better, so much classier, so more attractive. One of my burdens is my observations. I see a lot that I could improve on. I see a lot I could change. Oh, that could be better. Oh, why didn't they do that? Creativity and order are enemies. Creativity is to make a change. Order is to keep everything else in its place. They're very, very conflicting giftings inside you. I love everything in its place. Why in that? Like I'm looking up here at a bookshelf. Why is there nothing on top? Why isn't there some vases, some beautiful vases there? Why? I don't know. I get in my van. 
clock's not been set. I'm a professional fault finder, gifted by God himself. That's humorous. What are the changes? You may need changes in your nature. You may need changes in your, your skills to bring changes in your life. In my opinion, there will never be a day in your life that you don't quietly, silently want to improve your world. I do. What are the keys? Number one, start the questions. Write them down. Begin the questions in your life. Is anything I'm doing displeasing to the Lord? Because you, you may not be displeasing the Lord at all. The change is because you saw someone else what they had and covetousness rose up in you. I want what they have. Nothing wrong with that. But if it lasts very long, it destroys all the joy of ever achievement you have in your life. When I bought the Wisdom Center, the changes cost me 1.7 million. I went all over the world raising support, giving my honorariums. I wanted wallpaper, beautiful wallpaper, not painted walls. I wanted, I spent hours, I wanted gorgeous chandeliers, two of them in the middle of the building. I see a way to improve everything, even the Bible. You're kidding, no, it needs to be alphabetized. Why didn't God do that? I don't know. He probably didn't think about it. He was so busy kicking Lucifer's rear end out of heaven. But wouldn't it have been nice if the Bible was alphabetized? But it's like this. First five books of the Bible by Moses. What's the first book ever written in the Bible? By Job? J? Really? Yeah. Changes can bring joy. The process creates the illusion or the pleasure of progress. First start the questions. What are the departments of my life? Because a change in your health is different than a change in your wealth. A change in your schedule is very different than a change in your morning routine. You gotta make some changes here. What comes first? Let me give you some keys. Number one, the first question to ask yourself, am I presently obeying the past instructions from God? Am I doing what God told me to do? Number two, where do I need to see changes? My health, my wealth, Am I trying to do too much? John Kluger, the billionaire of $5 billion, says I've seen as many people fail from attempting too many things as attempting too few. Is it a change that will increase my stress or decrease my stress? Will it require something I don't want to keep doing? Is the change I'm wanting legitimate? 
where will my life improve if I make this change? Is it a change my circle of counsel would agree with? What's the true cost of the change in time and money? What's the true cost of the change? Because it's never what you anticipate, never. A friend of mine in Missouri, thousands of people in his church, I'd known him since he was a teenager. He got ecstatic over a $12 million building. And he had all around his office pictures of the gymnasium, pictures of the men's department. New excites. A new apple can be exciting. A new pear can be exciting. New is pleasurable. That was the sales talk of the snake in the garden of the Adam and Eve. You will know new things. <sighs> Where'd that come from? Not the devil. The passion for new is the DNA of our creator. Revelation 4.11. Everything he created was for his pleasure. Oh, I like this. I like this. Look at this elephant. And the next week he says, Oh, that's a huge thing. I think I'd rather have a little rabbit in the heavens. And he lost interest in the elephant after he saw the trunk. He said, I think I'll try a squirrel or rabbit. Then he said, you know, I wish I could ride, but this rabbit's too small for me to ride on. I think I'll create a horse. What do you think, Gabriel? Gabriel said, boy, that's a good idea. We could ride, yeah. And as they were riding the horse, Gabriel said, Father, you think of everything. Wow. And God looked up and he saw clouds. He says, Boy, I wish we could see some birds. And Michael, the archangel, said, Birds? What's that? God said, oh, That's my words for fine things. Really? Yeah, God said, Some could be blue. Are you serious? Did you hear that, Gabriel? He's got the ideas for different color birds. That never ends. The desire for change never ends. The passion for more never ends. But what are the keys? Have you counted the cost? What's the true cost? Every house I've ever bought had to have repairs, plumbing, beautiful home sitting on a hill. Back to own it right now. If you'd like it, I'd give you a good deal. Three stories. Don't that sound good? Walk out of your bedroom, the elevator, and you go down to the bottom and rock in your car. In that, boy, your imagination is the most inaccurate picture machine in your world. And you can have what you imagine, including the repairs that go with it. I couldn't tell you how many repairs I had to do on that elevator. But it was the first time I'd ever had an elevator. I'd never had a house with an elevator. Follow me? Anticipate the true cost of every change in your life. Or Brother Mike, I want to improve my life. I do too. I want to improve my ministry. I do too. But anticipate the changes. One of the keys in creating change in your life is recognize that nobody is focused on improving your life. Nobody's thinking of ways you can be better. They think your life is the way you're wanting it. Example, 
One of my trips to Nigeria cost me $18,000 in my phone calls. That's just part of traveling. Got to make your phone calls. Got to keep your staff going, you know. So I brought a friend, a preacher friend with me on some of my trips. We're sitting there and I'm calling and talking. Very quietly and silently, he says, real quietly. No excitement. No, oh, you're making a mistake. Oh, that's costly. Very softly, he says, uh, you might be interested in Viber. V-I-B-R. Of course, my hearing says, a viper? Why would I want a snake? He said, Viber. V-I-B-R. I said, never heard of it. Now, once you realize that the most important things in your life are still unknown, because as your life changes, your needs change. Your pleasure changes daily. I said, I've never heard of Viber. He said, let me show you the app. You can call your sister for free. I said, for free? I just paid 18,000 bucks a few weeks ago last trip here. Yeah, you could call. Let me show you. Real quietly, uninvolved, and almost with disinterest, he told me about the Viber, and I pulled it out. And sure enough, I began to call all over the world for free. But when he saw me with the other regular way of calling, he didn't say, oh, oh, let me help save you money. You haven't heard. No, he was very quiet, like it didn't make him any difference whether I knew about Viber or not. Nobody else... I, let me know, say nobody, because there's somebody. But at least 98% of all the people in your life don't think three minutes a day about how to improve your life. That's why I feel like my ministry is so vital, so important. That's all I think about is helping people improve their life. I'm obsessed with it. Have you ever met anybody like that before? I doubt it. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't met anybody in my whole life focused totally on how to improve my world, my life. I have to give instructions four and five times just to get what few things I'm trying to get. That's why I think our ministry is invaluable if you want to improve your life, which I do continuously. What are some of those keys? Asking questions such as, what is bringing me stress right now? Who is bringing me stress? Do I have the right goals in my timeline or my deadlines? reasonable mine or not my deadlines for almost everything is is unreasonable and illogical who set the deadlines I did I want everything right now everything could we do it not really I've often wondered why Jesus waited till day two for the second creation. Day five, what was wrong with him? Couldn't he do everything in one hour? I thought he could go, and all the elephants and giraffes start running through the jungles of Africa, and the birds start flying. Couldn't he? I don't know. I don't know him real well. All I know is he says, the next day and the next day, now I think he was showing us 
the law of timeline. There's a time for things. Now, one of my favorite people in the Bible is Solomon. I've spent seven hours in one day just studying every word he ever said. I spent 19 years studying Solomon's life just to write one book. Now let's look at that. To everything there's a time and there's a season. Am I ready to make the change? Is my family ready to make the change? What's the possible problems that could emerge if I don't make the change? What could happen? If I make the change, what are potential problems? Who's doing what I would love to do? Who's living the lifestyle I would love to live? And are they happy with their lifestyle? Questions? Are the birthplace for solutions? Success happens at the speed of your questions. Changes happen at the speed of your questions. Enough questions can stop a lot of pain because your pain has been created often by your desires and decisions. What are the keys for making changes? Ask more questions, talk to more people, and review your present benefits. What's going good in your life right now? Will it change something you love? I've been amazed at the changes in my desires. I remember I just had to have a jet. And then I bought one that flew faster than the first one. One flew 325 miles an hour, the Cessna Citation. And then I saw another one made by the Israelis. Oh, that goes 520 miles an hour. I want to go 520 miles an hour. Why? Save time. And it did. I went to four cities, four states in one day and met all the partners in four different cities in one day, etc. Every plus has a minus. Every positive has a negative. And you want to kind of remember that. Where do I think changes would be? I think the uh, prayer the prayer place, I call them my Jesus hour every morning. Three hours every morning, that's all I do. Is meditate, pray in tongues, pray in the Spirit. At nine o'clock in the mornings, I want to share with everyone. You have my uh, briefcase and my, there's three iPads in the left side of my briefcase. I want to share something with you that I'm doing now for all the preachers. It's extremely helpful, and it saves me $300 a day. Not a lot, but 20, 30 times that in a month is, you know, $9,000 a month. And I want to show you how I save 9000 a month just by making a change, just one change. Australia's here, Ghana's here, Japan, Mexico, Nigeria, Uganda. Thank you so much, good. Rene Poole, Taicha, my son in the Lord's here from Japan. He's here. Love you, son. Paul Wright, Kathy, Jill Rhodes. Jill sowed a personal seed to me of $200. Father, I have asked you for 12 $200 seeds in the next few days. 
let Jill within seven days see at least three surprise harvest. You changed my world with a $200 seed. Thank you, Father. Jill, Arkansas means the world. I'll tell you sometimes more why that's so important. David from Australia, I stared in your face this morning. I think it was, I think it was on PayPal. He blessed me this morning. Paul, Julie says, happy 57th anniversary. Jennifer, I love those words, David. Quote, everything you say gives me a fighting chance. Yes. Let me give you a little thing of a change. Words really matter to me. I'm a learner by obsession. I have had a craving for knowledge my entire life. I have deep admiration for achievers. Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton, Muhammad Ali, Tiger Woods. I really have admiration for achievers. Billy Graham, Franklin Graham of Samaritan's Purse, Rod Parsley, I really feel inferior to many, many people who I admire. How did they get there? How did they get there? If I see a guy that's got a small waist and so muscular, I'm so admiring. Boy, I wish I had that discipline. I, I, I wish I could do I'm that. So adamant in your Apple Music Library. You can ask me to play a radio station or ask for your music. That's uh. Sister Siri, she's a member of my church. She talks to me a lot. Hey Siri, how many people live in Louisiana? 4,648,000. Hey Siri, how many people live in China? 1.4 billion people. It's the biggest country in the world. Hey Siri, how many people live in Texas? 29,145,000. Hey Siri, how many books are in the Bible? Written under the supernatural guidance of the Holy Spirit by laymen and scholars, it has 66 ancient books. Hey Siri, how many words are in the Bible? 783,137. Hey Siri, what's the temperature here in Colleyville? 62 degrees. Hey Siri, how much do elephants weigh? Hey, Siri. Hmm? Hmm? Imagine wearing a wife that answered you that way. Hmm? I'm saying this. I never knew about Siri and what you could say and find out till a few months ago. Nobody had told me. Nobody told me. I didn't know I didn't have to buy a thermostat to see, are you with me? Let's get some basic things here. There's, there's 76 things you don't know that would radically affect your life if somebody told you. Why don't they tell me? Well, they're not around you. Why don't they tell me? They don't know themselves. 
Why don't they tell me? They don't know what you want to know about. That's why I'm obsessed with wisdom. Knowledge. Now let's give some basics. So I have a company. And I send them my audios. So they can send it back typed. Right. One month. My bill was $8,000. One month as they sent me back pages of everything I'd said to the staff, everything I'd preached in crusades. $8,000, that's only 100000 a year, you know. But that's 100000 You could put that in land. You can buy a used Rolls Royce for 36000 you could buy a different kind for twenty-two thousand. One's brown, one's white. You see, I accumulate knowledge continuously. So I got one of my ladies the other day, and I told Miss Rosa, my manager, I said, uh, "When I get through teaching the staff, have so and so." to type it out for me immediately. I'll finish by 10 o'clock. Now one hour of talking is 27 pages of a book, five by eight book. Now I don't share 2% of what I know, but I share what I think is important for the moment for people. But I don't share I, I've written 30, over 3,300 3, books, many of them waiting for editing. 3,300 right here in my private library. But not everybody wants to know about everything. Not everybody's ready to receive. Not everybody even believes you. There's a difference between people who need you and people who heed you and people who bleed you and people who lead you and people who, etc. There's seven of those words. Okay. So a few days ago, when I had asked at two o'clock, I said, does she have my transcript ready? What I spoke to the staff, she said, not yet. So at 3 o'clock, I said, did she finish my transcript? She says, not yet. So I said, we, we, next day I said, did she ever finish my team talk? Typing it out. Yes. Uh, it's a little 4.30 she did. So what I said from 9 o'clock to 9.45 took me six hours to get back. What did I do? Well, I got mad. So I reviewed the company. I reviewed the transcribers. I reviewed where people did it. And I said, you know, I'm going to see something. And so I took my smallest iPad and I looked at the notes I wanted to talk to the staff about on my huge iPad I have a app called Dragon Anywhere it's fabulous it's 90% accurate 90% accurate. And so I just punched. I put it at the top. I did it this morning. Today's Thursday, February the 23rd. So I'm live like normal. And I punched it. And everything I talk to anybody about now is typed out automatically, 90 to 98% accurate, right here. 
and it doesn't cost me a penny. I will not hire a transcriber the rest of my days on the earth. Boy, that's expensive. What am I? Yeah, it's three dollars a week. That one app types out every word I say. 90% accurate for free. It's $150 a year for that app. Now, I offered to help all my staff own that app and pay for it, but nobody's wanted to do that. But I will say this. Do I think every word I ever say typed out is worth $150 a year? Of course, of course, I've waited two and three days for somebody to type out a one hour teaching. This morning, everything I said is still here. I'm looking at it. I'm reading it. There it is. That's only one of 17,000 things you and I need to know. We don't have to know that a hummingbird is the only one that flies backwards, lying sleep 20 hours a day. I mean, we don't have to... I love learning all those things for entertainment. I love factual encyclopedias. When I was 16, my mother, 17 maybe, my mother brought the World Book Encyclopedia and I started reading and I read every single cotton picking word laying over my bed, page by page by page. I just have an unusual obsession for facts and knowledge. When I found out, when I found out that John Kennedy could read 3,000 words, that's John F., the, uh, you know, the president, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. When I found out he was murdered, you know, assassinated in the, from the library here in Dallas, Texas. When I found out he could read 3,000 words a minute, I said, shoot. So I begin to find out, does anybody ever heard of a speed reading course? Uh-huh, Evelyn Woods. It takes six weeks. I want to I wanna become a speed reader. So I did. And Mike Murdoch, too, can now read 3,000 words a minute. 3,400, if you want to be precise. At 90% comprehension under testing. I can read 3,000 words a minute under testing. I spend a number of years, so I don't think about that much anymore. If you add your hand when you're reading a page, it increases automatically 10%. I could talk a lot. I encourage my whole staff, please, please take a speed reading course. Nobody's interested. I ask all my staff, please get a black belt in the martial arts. If you can't stay to the black, get a brown. If you can't get a brown, get a purple. But but get get your mark. Get your you you want to be able to. One thing good about being in the martial arts is you you feel safe. You don't you don't feel afraid of anybody. Now I'm saying all these things. What do you want to change in your life? There was a great basketball star that I liked. His name was Larry Bird. And before breakfast every morning, he shot 500 free throws. 500 free, throw, free throws. 500 before he ever ate breakfast every morning. You say, none of those things mean anything to me. No. Here's the questions I want to ask you. Where do you need to make a change? Where should you make a change? 
where could you save a hundred dollars a month if you wanted to? That's you know it's not a lot, but at least it's twelve hundred a year. What could you do with twelve hundred? Things like that. Let me stop for a moment. Nigeria is watching. Nigeria asked me, please pray for Nigeria to elect the right person this Saturday. The only way they would, they never have. And I like, you know, good luck, Jonathan. I've been in his home and all that kind of stuff. We're friends. But let me give you an example about this. This is a person who wants me to pray for Nigeria to have. How do you pray? Oh, Lord, let Nigeria vote for a Christian. Oh, God. What, what does God do with that kind of prayer? Does he go tell everybody, hey, vote for him, vote for him. No, this morning, early, I prayed for Pastor David Ebiomi, who is an influential man with Bishop David Oyedipo from Lagos. Now, the Lagos pastor, David Oyedipo, is the mentor of David Ebiomi in Port Harcourt. Then you've got others. You've got Pastor K.K. Nwari. You've got Pastor Pauli Nietzsche in Abuja. You could, I could go down the list. What did I pray? I prayed for wisdom for Pastor David Oyedipo and wisdom in their influence. That's the only way I could pray for Nigeria. I can't say, God, give Nigeria a Christian leader. He hadn't even given us one in America. How would I call one in Nigeria? You follow me? So what do I need to say to God that guarantees God's intervention and influence? What do I pray? Now here's how I pray. Father, expose all the crooks in the political arena of Abuja, Nigeria. That's the capital. I think before I speak. I think before I talk. I don't want to pray for anything unless it's going to happen. I do not want to waste a sentence ever, even here with you. I pray this morning that God would raise the influence of my friends who are the pastors there. One pastor has 150,000. Another one has 20,000. Another has 300,000. They're all very dear friends of mine. I've been in their home. They've slept in my home. And I ask God to increase their influence in Nigeria. Today, now, I think Nigeria is six hours ahead. Let me ask my uh, secretary. Hey, Siri, what time is it in Nigeria right now? Hey, Siri, what time is it in Nigeria? 7.51 tonight. I was right, about six hours difference, okay. So the elections are kind of at Abuja Municipal. That's information. How often do you use Siri? What questions would you like to ask somebody? You can do it for free and never pay them a payroll. Baruch. Sean Henry, PhD. Hello from Ohio. Dr. Brown, I'm so glad you're here. Really glad. I feel you're caring. I really, really do and value it greatly. Who's watching me right now? Australia, Brazil, Ghana, Indonesia? You're encourager. Jamaica, Japan, Mexico, Nigeria, Norway, Uganda. David, thank you for those words. Dr. Mike, there's teaching about change is very refreshing. Thank you so much. With all my heart. Right, David's T-R-E-V-I-S-A-N. 
Would you write that down? I'll try to figure out a way to send him this on audio. Arthur said, yes, you helped me improve my life excellently. Gilbert San Antonio, Prosper from Ghana is here. Becky McCoy is here. Said, I really need this wisdom. Cindy Jones, quote, no one fights as hard to protect God's sheep, to educate us, to arm us with the Bible. We owe you. Father, take my words today and use them to prevent loss, disease, poverty, and disappointment. Amen. I'll show you on the screen if the Lord speaks to you to plant a seed. I have a hundred books I've written. One hundred. In Library 2. Library 2. Mike Murdoch Library. One hundred of my books are here. Inside of an e-book reader. You can carry the book anywhere in the world. In your briefcase, your purse. Even your purse. It's my gift of honor for the $200 seed. You can sow through Cash App, PayPal, Zelle. Anyone that's sowing $200 or more, you can call 844-789-SEED. You can call 817-759-BOOK. You can send a phone text, which reminds me, I don't get any report at all. I'm not getting any report on the phone texting, giving at all. Would you write that down? Can I depend on you? Good. WisdomCenterChurch.com P.O. Box 1925, Colleyville, Texas, 76034. 100 books, books 101 to 200 on an e-book reader. It's my way to celebrate and show honor for your support to my life. Vernon Carver. Eileen Wilkerson's here. Yay, Eileen. Jennifer. Nathan Griffin. Brother David, I'm going to try to get this on audio to you or transcript or something. Uh, he deserves it. He's very faithful, very consistent. Joseph Wesley said this teaching today is really helping me. Nathan Griffin has planted a seed from New York. Michael, we will re-air my last 55 minutes of teaching every hour. On the hour, we will re-air. Dr. Brown says, I want to buy you dinner. She is one of the few people in the world that ever buys me lunch or dinner. She does, though. Stacy, Jamaica, Kavina, Kelly, Davenport, Dr. Diane, I really value you. She is sending me a personal seed to my cash app. I decree the seven financial harvests in the Bible. Financial ideas, financial opportunities, financial discipline, financial endorsements, financial mentorship, financial favor in Jesus' name. I decree it. Thank you, family. We'll re-air this. I'll see you at 5 o'clock for ministry mentorship at 5 o'clock today. Thank you with all my heart.